Welcome to the IT and Digital Resources in Teaching Foreign Languages course, lecture number 16, using online words in English lessons, Gloucester, Lino. Outline for today's lecture. The first question, Gloucester, online board. And the second question, Lino, online board. Gloucester is a cloud-based platform for creating presentations and interactive learning, a platform that allows users, mostly students and educators, to combine text, images, video and audio to create an interactive, web-based poster called Glocks on a virtual canvas. Gloucester facilities the convenience of social information in many different fields, such as art, music, photography. Users also have access to a library of engaging educational content posters created by other students and educators worldwide. Gloucester enables interactive, collaborative education and digital literacy. Gloucester Inc. was founded in 2007 by Martin Santorkel, Patrick Prepsel, Roman Smola, Stanislav Sremek and Thomas Ployar, with offices in Prague and Boston. They launched the first platform Gloucester.com also in 2007. This platform was initially promoted as a visual network allowing users to express themselves via graphic blogs or glogs. However, in response to needs of educators incorporating Gloucester into lessons and assignments, Gloucester Edu was set up alongside Gloucester.com in 2009, offering a more secure and educational specific platform. Gloucester Edu has an annual subscription cost by gives educators a dashboard to provide instructions, templates and a private area for their class. The regular Gloucester.com, the social network platform, was closed for new reg registrations and account access ceased in February 2015. After this, the company focused solely on the Gloucester Edu platform. There is, however, a personal type license available for single users. The platform has grown into a worldwide community in over 200 countries with over 1.9 million teacher accounts with over 70 million student accounts who have created more than 25 million educational blogs out of 45 million total blogs on the service. Gloucester Edu is used as a learning and teaching tool to foster higher order thinking skills. Creating posters or blogs allows learners to engage closely with a subject, exercising critical thinking and research skills in selecting appropriate media and creative skills in structuring and arranging the finished piece. Gloucester is being used in place of traditional poster assignments and demonstrates how versatile such a poster creation tool can be when partnered with solid teaching pedagogy and teacher creativity. The use of Gloucester motifs and excites students to do their work. A study showed that the usage of the Gloucester Edu educational platform develops necessary competences such as communication skills, creativity and intellectual curiosity, critical and systemized thinking, information and media skills, collaborative and interpersonal skills, problem identification, formulation, and solving and social responsibility. So first of all, you need to go to a Gloucester link, edu.gloucester.com login, login using your username and password. The second step is select the button, create a new blog. This is a screenshot of the site edu.gloucester.com. This is a dashboard where you can create new blog. Blog creation. What do you want to learn? Canvas Freedom allows expression to take all the mixed text, audio, video, images, graphics and more from your files. Our pre-designed graphics all around the web using the inbuilt web picker browser yielding high-impact content with simple elegance. 
Teachers need to create an account and should create a free trial account first to explore the site before paying to use it in a classroom with students. The site guides users through its excellent tutorial videos, the best place to start. Teachers can also gain inspiration on using blogs through Gloucester's Pinterest, Facebook and Twitter communities. Then teachers can set up classes and invite students to use Gloucester through the teacher dashboard. Teachers can view student progress on GLOGS and grade GLOGS through the dashboard. Teachers can use this as a tool to display knowledge. Have students present information they have learned, allowing them to create GLOGS for individual or group collaboration work. They should remember principles of good design, use concise language, choose high-impact graphics and images, and use appropriate videos and songs to convey clear messages. If someone asked you what is a bear, where would you begin? Perhaps you could use Wikipedia to describe where bears live and what they eat. Or maybe you could use Google Images to show what different types of bears look like, or YouTube videos to show bears interacting in their natural habitats. The internet is full of useful resources, not to mention your own text, pictures, sounds, and videos. But what if you could have all this content in one place? With a glog, that's exactly what you get. With thousands of blogs categorized by subject and endless ways of expressing ideas, the Glogpedia library makes it easier to find exactly what you're looking for. Our structured and approved digital content for learners allows anyone to find and share information in our library, as well as get inspiration for creating new blogs. Why wait? Start blogging. And how would you describe a bear? The next online board that we will discuss is Lino. Lino is a web-based sticky note service that offers built-in boards called canvases on which people can post stickies. You can customize your canvas choosing colors and backgrounds, pick and choose your sticky note colors, even upload files and pictures on your canvas. You can create as many canvases as you want and have your students interact with the, the canvases, even start discussions using the stickies. One can either be a registered user or a guest. Both kinds of users can post comments on the canvas. Canvases have three levels of privacy public, friends, and private. You can use Lino on your computer and on your Android and iOS devices as well. You create your account using an open ID from either your Yahoo, Facebook, or Twitter crescentals, for instance. Lino is great for displaying and constructing knowledge, brainstorming, and mind mapping activities. Students can submit comments and respond to each other. For instance, the teacher posts the following question on the canvas, what classroom rules do we need to create a positive classroom atmosphere? Students can have a sticky each and respond on each other's canvases. You could have study guide questions or create vocabulary, math, flashcards. Are you looking for a way to get students to interact with your class lessons without having to always raise your hand? Well, there is a digital answer called Linoit. It's a really great device, uh, free website that you can use with any device, uh, whether you have a membership or not. If you just go to linoit.com, you can get started. So when you first go there, um, you'll see this, and it says even no signups needed. You can just give it a shot. Lots of different options for ways to use it. Uh, if I click on here, uh, it's great because it gives you a lot of tutorials on the sample Linoit. So one thing to get to know about Linoit, as you navigate around it, if you see the hand here, if you just navigate by clicking and dragging, uh, that's how you can get around on a Linoit to move um, to different parts of the board. Another option is down here in the corner. Uh, this shows you where you are on the board. So if I click and move this to a different location, it's going to take me to that spot of the board. It's kind of nice that way also. It's great to show participants that option because sometimes they'll cluster and put all of their post-its up here in this corner. If I want to add a post-it, 
all I have to do is click on it and type my message. I can add an icon if I like. Any kind of icon I want. And I can change the color of my post-it. And I can post. So there's my post. Once I have it on here, I can also move it. So there's lots of other options on here. Uh, you can um, peel off, you can edit your post, um, you can do all sorts of things on it. Uh, again, clicking back on it and I can go back in, uh, change the font size, um, the color of the font, um, and just play around with it. There's no, no harm done. Uh, there's other things you can do besides um, doing a post-it. I could upload a, an image just by clicking here on this one. Uh, and I could choose my file, uh, and I can also upload a video, which I have been finding to be one of the greatest uses for it. You can see right here that Linoid has done their own tutorial uh, video, and they posted it right on the board. I'd love to show you some examples of Linoid. We were doing a response to the story 11 by Sandra Cisneros. All I did was take the link above, I used my URL shortener called Shorten Me. I took the shortened link right here and I actually posted it on this board. Now there's lots of hidden, you can hide the features here, and if you go to this little arrow on the side, that will drop down so you can get to your um, post-its again. Let's say I wanted to post that link so kids could get to the Linoit easily. I would just click in here and paste that link in. I'm going to make that as large as possible and then post and that way um, all students or anyone who wants to participate if I scroll in uh, really large they can see the link and it'll take them directly to this board another idea is to post a video with an assignment on it so up in the corner we played this video and it will um, you can make it small It'll put it right on here. Yeah, it, man. Turn it on mute right now. Uh, and Or you can, and students can enlarge it. And then along with that comes the assignment. So you can, um, I want to stop so you can read the assignment. Um, the assignment is right here. It's Stories of Friendship. Watch the video, click on a post-it, share why your friend is the best, and read others' wisdom. Uh, so that was the assignment. Now, you can see the drop-down menus are kind of hidden here. If I click on the arrows, there they are. Here's another one down here. And this is where I can see the board. And again, I find it, um, you know, if I don't tell everyone that you can move around the board, they tend to cluster right up in the corner. So if you can move around and see people's um, uh, reactions to the video, um, it was a very emotional video. You can see uh, people were saying first time they cried in a queue session, but it is a very powerful video. This is a great way for your flip class. So all you have to do is copy the URL at the top, use one of the URL shorteners. I, I like to use Shorten Me, uh, which is my extension here, uh, and you can quickly get that out to students. Uh, post it into a website uh, or post it or even write it on the board and let them get to work on it. Linuit is a great option for hearing all student responses in your classroom. If you're brainstorming, organizing, or communicating ideas, it doesn't get much better than a classroom or office whiteboard. Tablets come close, though it is a great interactive whiteboard apps take advantage of touch controls along with easy sharing and collaborating features to help teachers and students think, organize, and create everything from mind maps to lessons to presentations. Teachers can demonstrate on the Gloucester Lino and share them with students for collaborative whole class discussions. Students can work in groups using Gloucester and Lino, collaborating in real time with drawings, images, and text. Students can use Gloucester and Lino as a presentation tool too. Now let's discuss the questions after our lecture. Describe the Gloucester online panel. The second, describe the Lino online board. 
and the last question for discussion, learn my family using the glossary and Lino online boards. So here you can see the list of references that we can use after our lectures and practical lessons. Thank you for your attention.